Hi everyone, so we are now in module 4. The module 4 is all about income tax schemes, accounting periods, accounting methods, and reporting. And we'll start with the income taxation schemes. An item of gross income is taxable in any of these tax schemes. We have final income taxation, capital gains taxation, and regular income taxation. The tax schemes are mutually exclusive, meaning to say if a particular gross income item is taxable in one scheme, dili na siya pwede i-tax po sa other nga taxation schemes. So like for example, interest income. Interest income is subject to final income taxation. So meaning to say, uh, tungod kay ang tax schemes are mutually exclusive man, ang interest income, dili siya pwede i-tax sa capital gains taxation or sa regular income taxation. Same goes with the exemptions. Kung ang usahag uh, particular gross income item is exempted from one scheme, it means nga that income also is not taxable to other schemes. So like for example, this income is not or this income is exempted from final income taxation. So it means that dili po siya pwede i-tax sa capital gains tax or sa regular income tax. Because of the different tax schemes, the items of gross income can be classified as follows. 1. Gross income subject to final tax. 2. Gross income subject to capital gains tax. And 3. Gross income subject to regular tax. Let us now have an overview of each tax scheme. So, overview lang sa since na ay separate module or separate na chapter para sa kada isa ka tax scheme. So, we'll start with the final income taxation. The final income taxation is characterized by final taxes wherein full taxes are withheld by the income payer at source. The recipient income taxpayer receives the income net of taxes. The payer is the one required by law to remit the tax to the government. Consequently, the recipient income tax payer does not need to file the income tax returns because the withheld tax constitutes the full tax due and are therefore deemed final payments. The system of taxation is referred to as the final withholding tax system. To give you a clearer picture of final income taxation, let us have this example. So, kining sa employment compensation, sweldo. Si employee with respect to his salary, no, with respect to his sweldo, siya ang income taxpayer. Every payroll niya, gididaka na yung salary. Gididaka na for katong mga deductions like uh, pag-ibig, PhilHealth, SSS. But in addition to that, gididakan sab na og tax. And that tax is called withholding tax. So, bali, ang iyang madawat na sweldo, no, ang madawat ng sweldo ni employee is already net of deductions and of course net of tax. And then si employer. So si employer ang nagdedak og or si employer ang nag withhold og tax sa sweldo ni employee. So he is now the payor and he is required to remit the tax nga iyang gi withhold to the government. And then si employee dili na siya kinahanglan mo file pa og income tax return since Ang katong withhold na tax ni employer are considered final payments. The difference between passive income and active income. Passive income are earned with very minimal or even without active involvement of the taxpayer in the earning process. So simply stated, kaning passive income mo ni ang katong income ni taxpayer na wala niya hagui, wala niya trabaho eh. Examples of passive income includes interest income from banks, dividends from domestic corporations, and the royalties. Active income or regular income, on the other hand, arises from transactions requiring a considerable degree of effort or undertaking from the taxpayer. So, kabalik tara ni siya sa passive income. So, here, kaninga income is na earn ni taxpayer tungod kay iyang gitrabahuan, iyang gihagoan. So, examples to this includes compensation income, business income, and professional income. We are now in the second tax scheme. This is the capital gains taxation. The capital gains tax is a tax that is imposed on the gain realized on the sale, exchange, and other dispositions of certain capital assets. 
And what are capital assets? Capital assets are assets that are not used in business, trade, or profession. So, kabalik tara ni siya sa ordinary assets. Kaya ang ordinary assets are assets that are used in business, trade, or profession, such as inventory, supplies, or property, plant, and equipment. So, ana e siya? Kung ang property or yung asset is gigamit sa business, that is ordinary asset. Pero kung wala siya gigamit sa business, that is capital asset. And you guys have to know that not all capital gains are subject to capital gains tax because most of them are subject to regular income tax. The capital gains taxation actually applies only to two types of capital assets and that are the domestic tax and real property. In capital gains taxation, si taxpayer still needs to file the capital gains tax return para ma-report niya ang gain and then he will going to pay the tax to the government. The last taxation scheme is the regular income taxation. The regular income tax is the general rule in income taxation and covers all other income such as active income and other income which is composed of gains from dealings in properties not subject to capital gains tax and other passive income not subject to final tax. In regular income taxation, the items of gross income coming from those sources previously mentioned are going to be measured using an accounting method. And then the income there is going to be accumulated over an accounting period and such shall be reported to the government through a document known as income tax return. The regular income taxation makes use of the self-assessment method. And we'll now proceed to accounting period. The accounting period is the length of time over which income is measured and reported. There are two types of accounting periods. First is the regular accounting period, which is consists of 12 months in length. It can either be a calendar year or a fiscal year. And then the second type of accounting period is a short accounting period, which is consists of less than 12 months. The calendar year accounting period starts from January 1 and we're going to end on December 31 of the same year. This accounting period is available to both corporate taxpayers and individual taxpayers. Under the NIRC, the calendar year shall be used when the first taxpayer's annual accounting period is other than a fiscal year, which means longer than 12 months in length. Second, taxpayers has no account has no annual accounting period for less than 12 months in length. And then third, taxpayer does not keep books and fourth, taxpayer is an individual. The fiscal accounting period, on the other hand, is any 12-month period that ends on any day other than December 31. So this is available only to corporate income taxpayers and this is not allowed to individual taxpayers. The deadline of the filing of the income tax return is on the 15th day of the fourth month following the close of the taxable year of the taxpayer. So for example, if the taxpayer is using the calendar year, so it means nga, ang yang end sa iyang accounting period is December 31. So the deadline for the filing of the annual income tax return would be April 15 on the next year. Okay, mo na ika upat niya ka month after the close of the taxable year. Another example, so butang taang taxpayer is a corporation and then ang iyang gigamit na accounting period is a fiscal year. And then let us assume ang, iyang, ang end sa iyang fiscal year is June 30, 2019. So therefore, ang deadline sa iyang submission sa iyang annual income tax return would be October 15, 2019 kay uh, maumanay ika 15th day of the 4th month following the close of the taxable year which is June 30, 2019 in this case. Okay, and then take note that upon the filing of the annual income tax return, no, in-file ni mo sa annual, I mean, in-file ni taxpayers sa yung annual income tax return, that is also the time nga mabayad siya sa Yang regular tax due. And we'll now proceed to the accounting methods. Accounting methods are accounting techniques that is or that are used to measure income. So there are five types of accounting methods. We have first the general methods which 
could either be accrual basis or cash basis. And then number two, installment and deferred payment method. Number three, percentage of completion method. Number four, outright and spread out method. And last, number five, the crop year basis. And so we'll now discuss each type of the accounting methods and we're going to start with the general methods, the accrual basis and cash basis. Under the accrual basis of accounting, the income is recognized when earned regardless of when received and then the expense is recognized when incurred regardless of when paid. Under the cash basis, the income is recognized when received and expense is recognized when paid. The financial accounting concept of accrual basis and cash basis are similar to their tax counterparts, except only of the following tax rules. Number one, advance income is taxable upon receipt. Okay, under financial accounting and reporting, advance income is not really an income. Technically speaking, ma fall niya under liability since ang nahita mo ani kibale. Ang business wala pa siya ka render of service ng customer, but yet si customer nagbayad na siya daan ni business no nag-advance payment siya but then there is a tax no for taxation purposes ang advance income is part of the taxable gross income so taxa na to siya though advance payment pa siya pero i-appeal naman nimo siya sa gross income nga subject to tax number two, prepaid expense is non-deductible So, prepaid expenses refers to expenses that are paid in advance for future period. So, these are not deductible against gross income in the uh, in the year paid. I deduct lang niya sila against income in the future period, as this uh, portion of that expense is expired or is used in the business. Number three, special tax accounting requirement must be followed. So, there are cases wherein the tax law itself provides for a specific accounting treatment of an income or expense. In this case, kung naajoy gispecify si tax si tax law nga gamiton nga method, then that method shall be used. Bisan pa og lahi siya sa accounting method nga gigamit ni taxpayer. And here's how to compute for the gross income using the tax accrual basis. Uh, we have here cash income plus the accrued or uncollected income plus also the advance income. The total now is the gross income. The total expenses using tax accrual basis is also computed as follows. So cash expenses plus the accrued or unpaid expense plus the amortization of prepayments and depreciation of capital expenditures and the total now is the total deductions or the total expenses. Under cash basis, income is determined as follows. So cash income plus the advance income, the total now is the gross income. The total expenses using the cash basis is also determined as follows. So, cash expenses plus the amortization of prepayments and depreciation of capital expenditures, the total now is the total deductions or the total expenses. Let us now have this illustration. A taxpayer providing services reported the following in 2019 and 2020. So let us now determine the net income for the years 2019 and 2020 using the tax accrual basis and tax cash basis. Okay, we'll start with the tax accrual basis first. Uh, to compute for the net income, we need to determine first the total gross income and then We're going to deduct the total deductions out from the total gross income, and then the answer now is the net income. In order to get the total gross income, we need to total the cash income, the accrued or uncollected income, and the advance income. Okay, let's start. Uh, first line item: collections from services rendered. Collections. So this means cash. So this refers to the cash income. So for 2019 we have 500,000 pesos, and then for 2020 we have 800,000 pesos. Next item, uh, accrued income from services rendered. So this refers to the income that is already earned but not yet collected. So this is part of the total gross income. So for 2019, na ay 500,000, and then for year 2020, 400,000. 
Next item, we have collection from accrued income of 2019. So, the collection is made in the year 2020, the amount of which is 470,000 pesos. Okay, the 470,000 collection from accrued income of 2019 is no longer part of the total gross income. I mean, dili na siya i-add sa total gross income since we're using tax accrual basis. Okay, under accrual basis, income is recognized when earned even if not yet collected. So, this means that uh, kaning collection nga 470,000, this is already recognized as income in the year 2019. So, part na niya sa 500,000. Next item, we have collection for services not yet rendered. So, this refers to advance income, mga advance payments gikan sa customer. So, for taxation purposes, advance income is part of the taxable gross income. So, this is included. So, for the year 2019, that is 300,000. And for the year 2020, it's 200,000. And we're done with the gross income items. So, now we're going to determine the total gross income. So, for the year 2019, we have collections from services rendered, 500,000, and then plus the accrued income of 500,000, and plus the collection for services not yet rendered of 300,000. So the total gross income for the year 2019 is 1,300,000 pesos. For the year 2020, we have here collections from services rendered of 800,000 pesos. Plus the accrued income from services rendered of 400,000 pesos and plus the collection for services not yet rendered, 200,000 pesos. So the total gross income for the year 2020 is 1,400,000 pesos. And so we're done with the determination of the total gross income and we'll now proceed to the deductions. Under the tax accrual basis, the total expenses or the total deductions is determined by adding cash expenses with the accrued or unpaid expense and with amortization of prepayments and depreciation of capital expenditures. Going back in the illustration, we have here first expense item, payment of expenses of current period. So payment, so meaning to say na outflow sa cash. So this is considered cash expenses. So for the year 2019, cash expenses total to 400,000 pesos and then for the year 2020, it's 600,000 pesos. Next is accrued expenses. So accrued expenses are expenses that are already incurred but not yet paid. So under tax accrual basis, accrued or unpaid expenses are part of the deductions. So appeal niya sa deductions. So for the year 2019, the accrued expenses is 100,000 pesos and then for the year 2020, 150,000 pesos. Next, we have payment of accrued expenses of 2019. The amount is 100,000 pesos. Payment is made in the year 2020. So here, ang nahita po ini, kaning uh, 100,000 pesos nga gibayad in the year 2020. This refers to the accrued expenses in the year 2019. Okay, bali, ang accrued expenses mango, these are expenses that are already incurred but not yet paid. Meaning to say, utang siya. Wala pa mabayarin yung expenses. So, what happened is that in 2019, naapay, uh, wala mabayarin nga expenses worth 100,000 pesos. And then, by the year 2020, ang wala mabayarin nga accrued expenses in the year 2019, gibayaran. So, in determining the total deductions, so, we're not going to include the 100,000. So, di yun natin siya i-appeal since this is already included as part of the accrued expense in the year 2019. And next, we have payment for expenses of the following year. So, for the year 2019, the amount of which is 200,000 pesos and then 300,000 pesos for the year 2020. Kining payment for expenses of the following year, this actually refers to prepaid expenses. So, under the taxation rule, the prepaid expenses are not deductible against gross income in the year paid. 
they are deducted against income in the future period they expire or are used in the business, trade, or profession of the taxpayer. So this means that gaining payment for expenses of the following year worth 200000 in the year 2019, hindi natin siya pwede i-include as part of the deductions in the year 2019. Dito natin siya i-appeal in the year 2020. And then, the 300,000 pesos na payment for expenses of the following year that is made on the, in the year 2020, dito po niya i-appeal as part of deductions in the year 2021. Okay, we'll now compute for the total deductions. So, for the year 2019, uh, we have cash expenses. This is the payment of expenses of current period worth 400,000 pesos and then plus the accrued expenses of 100,000 pesos. So the total deductions for the year 2019 is 500,000 pesos. For the year 2020, cash expenses, uh, this is the payment of expenses of current period. The amount is 600,000 pesos and then plus the accrued expenses for the year 2020 is 150,000 pesos and then plus the amortization of 2019 prepaid expenses. This is the 200,000 pesos. So the total deductions now is 950,000 pesos in the year 2020. Okay, now we're going to determine the net income in each year. So net income is computed by deducting total deductions from the total gross income. So for the year 2019, total gross income of 1,300,000 less total deductions of 500,000 pesos. So the net income for the year 2019 is 800,000 pesos. And then for the year 2020, the total gross income is 1,400,000 less the total deductions of 950,000 pesos. So the net income is 450,000 pesos. We'll now proceed to tax cash basis. And here's how to determine the total gross income under tax cash basis. So we have cash income plus advance income, and that is now the total gross income. And so we'll begin with the determination of the total gross income under the tax cash basis for the years 2019 and 2020. So under the tax cash basis, ang atong bantayan with respect to income is tanang cash collections related to income. Take note also that uh, cash collections related to income may arise from cash income or and advance income. So, let's start. First line item, we have collections from services rendered. So, this refers to cash income. So, for the year 2019, uh, the amount of cash income is a 500,000 pesos. And then for the year 2020, we have 800,000 pesos. Next line item we have is accrued income from services surrendered. So accrued income refers to income that is already earned but not yet collected. So this is not included in the computation for total gross income since we are using tax cash basis. So we are only concerned with cash collections. Next is the collection from accrued income of 2019, the amount of which is 470,000 and then it is collected in the year 2020. So this 470,000 here is part of the cash income in the year 2020 and since we're using tax cash basis, so this 470,000 must be included as part of the total gross income in the year 2020. Next is collection for services not yet rendered. So clearly, this is an advanced income. So under the tax cash basis, income or advanced income shall form part of the total gross income. So therefore, the 300,000 uh, 300, collection for services not yet rendered shall be included as part of the total gross income for the year 2019 and the 200,000 pesos will form part of the total gross income in the year 2020. And so we're now going to compute the total gross income under the tax cash basis. So for the year 2019, we have a collection from services rendered of 500,000 and then plus the 
uh, collection for services not yet rendered or the advance income, uh, we have 300,000. So the total gross income for the year 2019 is 800,000 pesos. For the year 2020, we have collection from services rendered 800,000 and then plus the collection from accrued income of 2019, 470,000 and then plus the collection for services not yet rendered or advance income, 200,000 pesos. So the total gross income for the year 2020 is 1,470,000. Let's find out now how much is the total deductions. We have first line item for deduction, uh, payment of expenses of current period. So obviously, payment na siya, so there is an outflow of cash. So this is part of the deductions. So for 2019, 400,000 and then for 2020, 600,000 pesos. Next, we have payment of accrued expenses of 2019, the amount of which is 100,000 pesos and payment was made in the year 2020 so since we're using the tax cash basis so the 100,000 pesos is a cash expense and is part of the deductions in the year 2020 next is the payment for expenses of the following year so this refers to prepaid expenses so kung unsan treatment sa prepaid expenses sa accrual basis same ratio sa cash basis so, this prepaid expenses are not going to be deducted against the gross income in the year paid. So, they will be deducted against income in the future period they expire or are used in the business trade or profession of the taxpayer. So, here, the payment for expense of the following year, 200,000 pesos in the year 2019, so, mahimo ni siyang deductible from the gross income pag a year 2020 and this 300,000 pesos na payment for expenses of the following year in the year 2020 this will be deductible from the gross income in the year 2021 we'll now compute for the total deductions so for the year 2019 uh, we have payment of expenses of current period of 400,000 pesos and then wala na ilain. So, the total uh, total deductions for the year 2019 is 400,000 pesos. For the year 2020, we have a payment of expenses of current period of 600,000 pesos. And then plus the payment of accrued expenses of 2019, 100,000 pesos. And then we also have the amortization of the 2019 prepayments. Of 200,000 pesos so the total deductions for the year 2020 is 900,000 pesos will now determine the net income in each year so the net income is computed by deducting the total deductions from the total gross income so for the year 2019 total gross income is 800,000 pesos less the total deductions of 400,000 pesos so the net income for the year 2019 is 400,000 pesos. For the year 2020, the total gross income is 1,470,000 and then the, or I mean less total deductions of 900,000 pesos. So the net income for the year 2020 is 570,000 pesos. For the taxpayers who are selling goods, the gross income is computed as follows. So we have sales, less cost of goods sold. The difference is the gross income. And then the cost of sales is computed using the inventory method. So beginning inventory plus purchases, the total is the total goods available for sale. And then less ending inventory. So this is now the cost of goods sold.